Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. The Mini 2 is proving to be yet another incredibly popular and capable drone from DJI. As a sub 250 gram drone, it escapes most drone regulations in Canada, but not all. Here's what you need to know to fly safely and legally. I'm going to start with some basic rules that do and do not apply to the Mini 2. Then cover some frequently asked questions and finish off with my guidelines for safe flying. Drone regulations in Canada cover drones in three weight classes. Those below 250 grams, those from 250 grams to 25 kilograms inclusively, and drones over 25 kilograms. Transport Canada call these micro RPAs, small RPAs, and well, they don't have a special name for those over 25 kilograms. Most of the rules around drones that you'll see on the Transport Canada drone safety website are applicable only to the, this middle class, drones from 250 grams to 25 kilograms. But there is only one regulation that applies to sub 250 gram drones. 900.06, which we'll talk about in a second, but there are a few other restrictions you definitely need to be aware of. 900.06 applies to all drones, including the DJI Mini 2, and I call it the don't do anything stupid rule. No person shall operate a remotely piloted aircraft system in such a reckless or negligent manner as to endanger or be likely to endanger aviation safety or the safety of any person. Yeah, this is a very broad and general rule, but it does state a couple of things pretty clearly. First of all, stay away from anywhere manned aircraft are flying or might be flying. And secondly, don't fly recklessly around people. But what about all the other regulations? Well, first of all, you don't need to register a Mini 2 and you don't need to have any level of drone pilot certificate. But if you add anything to your Mini that brings it to 250 grams or more, you've just jumped into the next weight category and you do need to register it and you do need at least a basic drone pilot certificate. Neither of which is hard to get, by the way, and I have lots of videos that explain how to do it, but you do need to do these things if you've gone over 250 grams. What about flying near airports, heliports, or in controlled airspace? Well, again, none of the specific regulations about this kind of stuff apply to sub 250 gram drones, except the don't do anything stupid rule and I'll provide some specific guidelines in a minute. Okay, but what about flying near people? Again, none of the usual drone regulations apply, but you can't be reckless and you can't put people at risk. Here are some questions I get asked every day. Number one, should I register my Mini 2? You don't need to because it's under 250 grams. But if you're thinking of flying it with anything that might bring it over the 250 gram limit, such as the propeller guards, then yes, you must register it. Go to the Transport Canada drone portal to register. The Mini 2 will not be listed on their drop down menu of makes and models. So all you do is you select the not listed option and just write it in. It costs $5 to register your drone and I have a separate video describing the whole process. It's very easy. Number two, I see all sorts of rules around basic and advanced operations. If I'm flying a Mini 2, which of those am I? Answer, as long as you're under 250 grams, you are flying neither basic nor advanced operations. Only the 900.06 don't do anything stupid rule applies. Next one, how close to an airport can I fly? Well, don't fly anywhere you see or expect to see manned aircraft, including near the ends of airport runways, near heliports, and don't forget most hospitals do have a heliport, 
or anywhere near a seaplane base or where you see seaplanes operating. My guidelines are these. Check the NRC Drone Site Selection Tool website or the Drone Pilot Canada app and stay out of any red no-fly zones that those tools show that are applicable to basic operations. Just stay out of those areas. Now, if you do need to fly in those areas for whatever reason, maybe you're doing a roof inspection or a real estate shot or something like that, just fly low. Stay below 30 meters or 100 feet. Another question I hear all the time, can I fly my Mini 2 in Class E airspace? Yes, you can, but Class E, as well as Class C and Class D airspace, is controlled airspace. This is airspace designated around major airports, so air traffic is very likely to be present. Note that controlled airspace like Class C, D, or E starts right at the ground level. My guidelines? Again, check the Drone Site Selection Tool or Drone Pilot Canada app, look for these zones, and stay out of them. And if you do need to fly in a red no-fly zone, stay below 30 meters. Okay, fine. So are there any real no-fly zones for sub-250 gram drones? Well, as it happens, there are. There's three specific ones. Class F restricted zones are no-fly zones for all aircraft, all drones, including sub-250 gram drones. An example of a Class F restricted zone is the area around Niagara Falls. The second no-fly zone for sub-250 gram drones is anywhere near forest fires or any other temporary restricted zones. There are notifications called NOTAMs that communicate this kind of temporary restriction, but you actually have to go and look for them to find them. So unless you're gonna go and look for those NOTAMs, absolutely stay away from forest fires, any other emergency situation, especially anything where you could be experiencing an air ambulance coming in to, to rescue someone or to help find someone or anything like that. The third area that is a no-fly zone for sub-250 gram drones is national parks. National parks you cannot take off from, land in, or fly over, unless of course you actually have permission from the park superintendent. Now, the next few things are not restrictions in terms of airspace. In that sense, you can fly over them, but you may not take off or land in certain areas unless you have permission. That includes private property, most provincial parks, and many municipal parks, especially parks in Toronto, by the way. You cannot take off or land in any of these areas unless you have permission. The next one's an interesting one. The DJI Mini 2 has a built-in fly safe map that DJI provides. So the question is, can I rely upon the DJI fly safe map to keep me flying safely and legally? Unfortunately, the answer is no. The DJI FlySafe map does not reflect Canadian regulations and it is missing many no-fly zones, especially those Class F restricted zones. So you must consult the NRC Drone Site Selection Tool website or again the Drone Pilot Canada app for proper representation of Canadian drone regulations. If the DJI fly map prevents you from flying at a particular location, and it might, please check those tools and carefully examine the area before attempting a DJI unlock. Can I use my Mini 2 for commercial drone work like real estate shots? I swear I hear this question three times a day. <laughs> Yes, absolutely yes. The Canadian drone regulations, unlike American regulations, do not differentiate between commercial or recreational flying. All the same rules apply, or in the case of the Mini 2, all of them don't apply, except of course 900.06. Last but not least, do privacy laws apply to the Mini 2? Well, yes they do. I strongly recommend you read the privacy guidelines on the Transport Canada Drone Safety website. They provide a lot of detail. 
But here's my recommendations in, in a nutshell. Number one, don't take images, still pictures or video, of people or their possessions where they would reasonably expect privacy. In other words, don't fly over and take pictures of stuff in somebody's backyard. Second of all, stay back sufficiently that personal identification is not possible, especially faces. And ask permission. If you're flying somewhere over someone else's property, ask their permission before you do it. And if someone complains, respectfully and safely, stop your flight and leave. Finally, here are my guidelines for safe DJI Mini 2 flights. First of all, keep your drone within visual line of sight so that you can actually see it and never more than 500 meters away. If you can see your drone, you are very likely to be able to stay out of trouble and keep it out of trouble. Second of all, do not fly when you've been drinking or are under the influence of drugs. In any of those cases, you're not likely to be either able to make proper decisions or act quickly enough if something goes wrong. My third guideline is to stay low. Generally speaking, stay below 120 meters or 400 feet. That's the normal limit for, for other drones. And if you're flying in what would otherwise be considered a drone no-fly zone, stay low. Stay around the height of trees or buildings in that area and definitely stay below 30 meters or about 100 feet. You need to respect the environmental limits that your drone is capable of. The Mini 2 should not be flown below zero degrees Celsius, the freezing point, or if the wind exceeds 36 kilometers per hour. These are in the user guide and those are the limits for the drone. If you fly outside of its environmental limits, it could either go out of control or fall out of the sky unexpectedly. Both of those are pretty dangerous things to happen. Number five, stay away from manned aircraft and anywhere manned aircraft are likely to operate. Stay away from airports, heliports, hospitals, anything like that. And lastly, don't fly near or over people, and especially don't fly over crowds of people. Now, none of these items are rules or regulations. They're just my guidelines. But failure to follow safe, sensible guidelines, really just common sense, may be considered reckless and negligent, a violation of 900.06, and a violation of that kind could lead to a fine of up to $3,000. I don't think you want to do that. So I strongly recommend you fly safely, follow these guidelines. Well, there we have it. How the Canadian regulations apply to the DJI Mini 2. If you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel and ring that bell for notification of all my upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.